Chapter 8, Part 3, Perpetual System. We're going to do the costing and the sales journals for LIFO, FIFO, and weighted average using Perpetual. Now, Perpetual, we're going to transfer the cost from inventory to cost of goods sold at the point of sale. Two entries for each sale. Book the sale, and you've got to book the sale, and then you've got to transfer the cost out of inventory to cost of goods sold. All costs associated with inventory go to the inventory account. I'll go back there, so make sure you read that. Now, cost flow assumptions. We're going to look at three. Again, we have FIFO, which is first in, first out, when we're identifying the costs. LIFO is the last cost in, is the first cost out at the point of sale. Remember that because we're doing perpetual. So it matters when things are bought or sold. And average cost, the same thing. We're going to determine a per unit cost every time we make a sale. So that's what makes this a little more complicated. We're going to do exactly the same problem. And the first thing we're going to do is determine the total units available for sale and the total cost for those units. So, our total cost, we take our beginning inventory plus our purchases. So we know that we had a total of 6,000 units available for sale with a cost of 117,000. Total units sold, we sold 2,500 at 30 and 2200 at 33. So, total sales is 147600. So, we had 6000 units available for sale. We sold 4700, which means our ending inventory is made up of 1300 units. And again, what we're trying to do is take that 117 and allocate it between units sold and ending inventory. So, we're going to first start with FIFO. Now, FIFO, here's our problem. The first thing is for FIFO, we sold 2,500 units at the, uh, uh, and so therefore we go back to our oldest first. So those would be all gone, and we would end up with 500 of those. Now we sold 2,200. We go back to our oldest units. And now we have none of those left, and we only have $1,300 at $23 each. So now we've got, those are the two sales, now we've got our total cost of goods sold. We've got our units and ending inventory, which are at the most recent costs. So that totals our cost of goods sold. Cost of goods available for sale, if we add up, any inventory and cost of goods sold, and our gross profit is 60500 Again, you get exactly the same answer for perpetual and periodic when using FIFO, and that's why under the international standard, it's the only one they allow. They do not allow LIFO. So now let's look at all the journal entries. Our purchases, then our sales. Remember, we have to put cost of goods sold. Then we've got our more of our purchases. Remember, everything goes to inventory under perpetual. Then we have our sale. And remember, again, we book cost of goods sold. Now, let's see what this problem looks like based on how Connect does it. So, if you look at this, you will see at the end of the month for uh, units in inventory, you end up with 1,300 units at $23. So... This gives you an idea of how it works under your system. And again, you get the same answer under perpetual and periodic for FIFO, for FIFO only. Now we're going to do it a LIFO. You get a totally different answer. So here we go. We had our sales. Now, uh, when we sold the 2500 remember, we take the most recent purchase first. So we take 2018 and then we take... 500 at 12. Now we make the sale of 2,200 units, and we're going to take that all out at the $23. So there's our 1,300 units, but as you can see, 
what's ended up happening is we've got 500 in there at 12 and 800 at 23 because of when the sales were made. So now we've got our cost of goods sold. There's our ending inventory. And if you notice, when you add them up, we get our 117. So our gross profit under LIFO is going to be 55000 Now we'll do the journal entry only for the sales. So there's our first sale. There's our second sale. Now this is the way it looks when you look at your problem. If you notice, for any inventory, we end up with 500 units at 12 and 800 units at 23. Our cost of goods sold are going to be 500 at 12, 2,018, and 2,200 at 23. So there's your problem. Now, what about average cost? This one's a little more difficult because you got to do it average every single time. The new average is determined after each purchase by summing the cost of the previous inventory balance and the cost of the new purchase and dividing this total by the number of units on hand. So now let's take a look at our exactly the same problem. So we're gonna, we had beginning of 1,000 at 12, then we bought another 2 at 18, which gives us an average cost of $16.00. And so we're going to take that $16 times the 2,500 units we sold. So that gives us cost of goods sold for those of 40000 Now, we take 518 That's what we have left over because we sold our 2,500 and we had a total of 3000 And now what we're going to do is we're going to add our purchases. We're going to come up with a new average and we're going to take our 3,500 units divided by, and we're going to divide that into the 77,000, which is the value. And now we have a new average cost of $22. So remember, you have to redo it every time. And we're going to take $22 times the 2,200 units that were sold. So now we have our cost of goods sold for our 4,700 units at 88,400. Our units in ending inventory are going to be 1,300 times 22, and that's what we would start with for our next month. We add that to our cost of goods sold, and again, we get our 117. So our gross profit minus our cost of goods sold, now we have a, a gross profit of 59,200. Our journal entries would look I'll go back and take a look at that. Now, our journal entries, just for the sales, that's what it would look like. Now, what, was it, what does it look like for your homework? This is what it looks like. So, remember, when you make the sale, you're going to have a new cost every time because you've got to use average costing. And the average cost that you end up with moves to the uh, next item based on that's going to be the value of your ending inventory per unit when you start the next month. Now, the last thing is income taxes. Many companies choose LIFO in order to reduce income taxes. Taxes are not reduced permanently, but in some cases they are. The IRS requires companies to follow the LIFO conformity rule. If a company uses LIFO to measure taxable income, it is almost must use LIFO for external financial reporting. The LIFO conformity rule permits LIFO users to report non-LIFO inventory valuation and a disclosure note, but not on the face of the income statement. Now, I want you to know they don't, the IRS really doesn't follow this rule. I mean, they say it in the textbook, what I found out in real life is not true. So a lot of companies do LIFO for book, uh, for book for tax and FIFO for income tax reporting. And that ends this presentation. And remember, LIFO is not accepted under the international standard.